for the five-sided prompt. I ended up not streaming this one just because I've got a bit of a bad throat. So I couldn't really face doing eight hours of talking. So I just did this one offline. My intention was to do a sort of high-rise slum, kind of like the Kowloon Walled City in Hong Kong that came down in the 90s. So like super dense, high-rise, and just like this real dense urban noise. Lots of cables, lots of satellite dishes and sheets and things like that all tacked onto the sides of buildings. I should have probably added some signs as well, but I didn't really think of that actually. Um, my original goal was to make a whole load of these modules, so I made like shop fronts and pillars and boxes that would go above doorways and things like that. So that was for the ground floor, and then I also made two different variations for the upper floors. That was just like one with a window and one that was plain. And then a bunch of stuff that could be used as like greeble to just scatter on the surface. So I did like a little corrugated iron shack that would kind of pin onto the front of the building. Just some regular sheet corrugated iron and some railings as well as satellite dishes and aerials and things like that. So of course with something like this when you're doing urban noise you could go so so much further but just because I was doing this entirely made within geometry nodes normally you would make these modules manually you know you might do some cloth sims you might do a bunch of modeling bit of sculpting make a bunch of these unique things in the most efficient way possible which would be modeling by hand you maybe do procedural variations but ultimately doing the actual base geometry is just so much quicker by hand in this case however because it's november we're doing everything as we can with nodes so i put together all of the modules and then my original plan was to use splines so it was going to be like a five-sided uh, marina kind of thing so like water with boats and then five canals joining it and i did a little thing with some curves coming into the middle and i was trying to work out how to do that i ended up switching them out for lines and it was just try like trying to work out how to actually process it so that I would have transferable attributes that I could move through from the initial lines to the uh, to the curve. So then I would have two sides to each one of these lines, which I could put buildings on. And then I needed to instance vertical lines so that I could actually put the tower stacks on these curved lines. But I needed to transfer the curve tangent to these stacks so that I could align all of the buildings. So there was just like a lot of transferring, capturing, transferring, capturing down a lot of levels and it just got a little bit confusing. I frankly was not able to do it with the current system. It just, it really wasn't feasible. Like you could have done it ultimately, but it was just too much to keep track of. So I really hope that we do get some named attributes back and hopefully if we do named attributes, we'll be able to get proper inheritance from points to instances. So for example, if you were taking like the curved tangent, if you were to write that to a named attribute, then you'd really want that to be passed down to whatever you instance on the points so that they each pick up the attribute, that, that curved tangent, so that you could use that for the rotation later. So in the end, I just decided to tweak it a little bit, get rid of the idea of doing the canals. I may do that for a later version when I'm able to do this a bit more manually after November, but I was just doing it as a pentagon because obviously it's five sided. So I just have these five sides, just doing it with a cylinder so that I've got my faces that I can take the normals off. And that's going to give me the really regular arrangement of these modular blocks. So it's a really easy way of working. And then I also did a little bit of a mask on the Z height just to make sure they had a little bit of unevenness on the top edge. You don't really see it from down below, but you do see it in the shadow. So I thought that was quite important to include. And then forgetting all of the other things, it was essentially just, you know, you mask out the, the base level and that's going to give you your ground floor. And then your first floor up to whatever, hundredth floor, you can just put on your upper floor module. So that's fine. And then on the front, you can instance, basically create a whole load more points on the fronts and instance all of your additional greeble stuff like the shacks, the corrugated iron, the aerials and things like that. Obviously, because it's a tower, needed to have just the aerials and the satellite dishes like up, up at the high end, just because, you know, they would have nothing, no access to the sky otherwise. And then I also instance a bunch of planes because I wanted to get like the wire flood node from the toolkit in just to get that like real quick flood of wires. I needed it to look like it had a lot of uh, additional detail and noise going on. So I instance a, bu a bunch of planes on the surfaces so that it wasn't just the full thing that was covered in cables, they were coming out of specific points and then those planes would essentially join up between each other. So I did two lots of wire floods. I did one that was a shorter cable which had an eight meter radius that it could connect within and another one which I had a 20 meter radius that could connect within. Just so I had a few that were covering like the whole span but a majority of them were just stuck on the edges. For the materials I kept it super basic, just like random per island 
on the geometry shader node and that basically allowed me to get like a, a zero to one gradient per section per like per mesh island to like work properly you really need to be working with realized instances but in this case i just did it with that one it still looked okay because there was like enough different modules that you could kind of mix it up and i was also randomizing the instance index so nothing had like a continuous equal arrangement of of parts i did give a little bit of variation to uh the wires because the wires had their own material so it was just like making sure that they joined onto the main geometry line at a different point. Additionally, I did a shadow caster cylinder on the outside, which just prevented light coming in from the sky at the corners. And then I duplicated that for the inside, which I turned into a volume because I needed the top and bottom for that one. And so that allowed me to get this kind of volumetric lighting coming down diagonally from the top, which I just put a little bit of noise in. So it's like super basic, but it makes the top edge kind of fade out a little bit as if there's quite a lot of pollution going on. So that's about it for this one. Hopefully I'll be able to start streaming again soon. I think my throat needs another couple of days though. I'll see you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.